All right guys, Papa Pepper on the Abundant Harvest Homestead back once again. I must warn you as I begin this video, this is not the video I expected to upload tonight. The reason being, I spent a lot of my day shooting and collecting footage for a video that my mic cord that attaches my Canon camera to my Rode um, microphone has got some sort of a, a kink in it something where the wires aren't making a good connection, and all the audio for everything I had was trashed. It involved a number of things. One of them is a job I recently went to, um, the only job I recently went to really. I had to go remove a bunch of, a bunch of plants. They were just cutting back a bunch of things. There was some mulberry trees and some fig trees. I'm actually getting the fig trees in right now. Just the cuttings, the stuff we chopped off, and I think they're gonna grow. I'll explain that in a bit. But all the stuff that would normally just be waste, I see as a potential benefit to my property, something that can even feed my family. So I'm excited about that. So I brought the mulberry cuttings home and the uh, fig cuttings, and we're getting those in right now. Also, there was a large amount of um, stuff that some of my neighbors had available. Um, when people do different jobs, a lot of times some of the stuff can be repurposed. You take something old out, you put something new in. Now, if you actually have the intention of repurposing it, normally you take it apart in a way that makes sure you can use it. So if you're just trying to get the job done and remove a bunch of junk and then somebody might use it, you just kind of tear it up and throw it on a pile. But I went and sorted through some of it. I found a bunch of uh, fence spindles, which I would never buy, and I don't like the look of new construction anyway. But um, I've got some old ones now, and for free, so that's pretty cool. Also got a number of posts, and some different lumber, and various things. The cool thing is, is that we don't just take from our neighbors though. I also spent some time yesterday trying to get enough fish for a fish fry for some neighbors of ours. Um, there are a couple old enough to be my parents, who are also taking care of his mom. So three of them, and they're older, and life is doing what it does for people. So, uh, you know, they're not exactly out at the lake enjoying the time fishing or catching food that way. But we do a bit of that. So I spent some time yesterday trying to catch them enough fish for a fish fry. I brought home 20 of them, and those are pretty cool. So I also caught a snake when I was out there. A beautiful, beautiful snake. Northern water snake, non-venomous. And then we released some snakes and lizards in the property too as we're hanging out on other properties and working on stuff, you know, if we're... Some of my neighbors give me a certain amount of freedom just to kind of check through some areas to make sure there's no snakes and they want to kill them all. So the non-venomous ones we like to bring back here and release and put them into our organic pest control posse. So we were releasing some of those earlier too. So what I'll do is I will roll just some of the footage I was going to use. I'll put some music in the background just so you guys can see a little bit about what I was just talking about. And then I'll show you what's going on here.
now you can see what we're dealing with. That's all figs on top. Those big couple on the bottom are some mulberries. And that brings us to here. So here is cutting from a fig tree. Um, the root system of this thing was big and it had these all over the place. Now we have some brown turkey figs growing on our property and they can put forth fruit, but they normally don't make it through the winter. Um, the plants will die back to the ground level. So when I saw that a number of these were not only um, not died back, but some of them were budding out already too. I don't see any buds on this one. It's actually been two days since we took it down, but it's still green, it's still alive. So the fact it didn't die back leads me to believe one of two things. Number one is it's a hardier variety. There's varieties like Celeste or Brooklyn White or Chicago Hardy or things like that that should do good and overwinter fine in my zone. And then there's stuff that's kind of better in Texas or Florida or somewhere farther south. So if I can find a better colder more cold hardy variety, that's great for me. Um, the ones I got in, I just took cuttings, sticks, and shoved them in the dirt. And now I've got a whole row of them growing. The other option with why this one didn't die back is it was down by one of the lakes here. So because the lake, it can have a microclimate and actually be a little warmer than it would be somewhere else. I'm not sure what it is, which one of those is correct, but I'm gonna give them a try. So I'm pushing back some of our forest I guess some of the the stuff that's all growing up where I'm trying to expand my garden area and uh, unfortunately with everything going on these days I can't just go get free mulch whenever I want now so now we're chipper shredding our own which is is a process but it allows me to get rid of some of our brush piles around here um, but all I'm doing is any one of the nodes where they could put forth a leaf or a stem or a flower or a fruit can also put forth a root. So normally I'll take these guys and I'll make sure to kind of have a good section with some different nodes and I'll bury that. And then um, I'll just keep it watered and as it wakes up I think there's a good chance that I could actually have these take root and grow. We've had a high success rate already. And I'll give you a look at that in just a minute. I'm just gonna cut this one off so I can put this one in. And then we'll go and show you how I do this. This chop saw is one of my favorite garden tools. You can pick them up at Tractor Supply. Little hook there, big hook here, a hole for hanging, um, serrated edge back here, and a great uh, blade on that side, so. Right now we're just gonna use the saw. There we go. And I think I'm gonna take this one off too. Right about here. So all I do is to give myself a couple options, I'll stick usually two in each hole. I've got some holes back here. Stick those in and it's just about as deep as I could go with my post hole digger. Pack some stuff in. I'll pack it in a little tighter later. And then I just run the hose on it and let it soak. So as I get back to plant propagation too, these here are actually just some white mulberries. They came out of my bathroom, so you can see where the old growth kind of stopped from last year with the leaves that are brown. And then everything shooting up is new growth. Mulberries grow really quickly. Um, but these I actually found on my drive back from Wisconsin last summer. I pulled up into a parking lot and the tree that people were pulling into and cracking the branches was actually white mulberry. So I wanted a white mulberry because I've got Russian mulberry and red mulberry and Pakistan mulberry. And I think I got some black mulberry. I wanted some white mulberries. And sure enough, um, the ones that were broken off or breaking off, I grabbed a couple of those, just put them 
into some soil, kept it wet, and we got them growing. So that's my plan for those other ones. It should work. It's getting cold. I got some other things to do, and I didn't want this video to be too long. So I'll see you guys next time. At least we're still getting blessed, even though we're not as spoiled as we once were. Papa out. Mm -hmm.